When the pandemic started, my wife and I, as with a lot of people, had to start working remotely and working from home. We lived in an 850 square foot place and there was not much room for us and it quickly became apparent that we needed to adjust our living. And as the pandemic has progressed and we get out of the pandemic, working from home is a very attractive option and we can be working remotely. So I wanna take some time to educate you on the best neighborhoods for you to be living in if you're planning on working remotely. If this is your first time to the channel, hi, my name is Nathan. I'm a realtor here in St. Louis and this whole channel is dedicated to helping people like you figure out what you need in in order to move to St. Louis, what the best neighborhoods are, and what it's really like to be eat, sleeping, and playing here in St. Louis. If you haven't done so already and like watching these videos, make sure to be reaching out to me. My number is down below because I help people every single day find that right home for them, given different circumstances and what they're looking for in their lifestyle and their livability, um, because each person is different and each neighborhood is different, and I love helping people find that right neighborhood neighborhood that fits their lifestyle. But without further ado, let's get right into the meat of it. And I have to disclose this, that I am a real estate agent. And so this is not my list on my personal top 10 neighborhoods uh, to be working remotely from. However, this is a list that was curated that has a large square footage uh, for your home that is less than $500,000 for the average within the neighborhood. But I can give you the real details on what it's like to be living in each of these neighborhoods and the pros of con of each of them. So make sure to be staying tuned to figure out which neighborhood is the right one for you. Before we get into the actual meat of the top 10 neighborhoods to be living in, if working remotely, I wanna share with you why St. Louis can be an awesome opportunity for working remotely. First, St. Louis has a cost of living that is lower than the national average. We are 9% under what the average cost would be to be living in the United States so you are saving on other costs not just for housing but also for groceries utilities transportation and all of that fun stuff we also have low housing prices we are about a hundred thousand dollars under the national average for homes so you can be getting a lot more square footage and a lot larger home compared to the majority of the United States when working from home you do need to get out and have a good time and so there are a lot of parks here within St. Louis, a lot within the city, a lot within the county, and you can easily be getting to a lot of these parks. And if parks aren't your vibe, there's still a lot of fun things to be doing as well that are pretty free for the most part. There's a lot of things to be doing in St. Louis for kids as well. Towards the city, there's Forest Park where you'll have a lot of free options to be sending your kids to to learn about culture. You also have the art museum, the city museum Coming in at number 10 is the Baldwin slash Manchester slash Ellisville area. And the reason that this is number 10 is that the average home price in 2021 was only $360,000 and the average uh, square footage in the home was around 1,700 square feet. Now within Baldwin and Manchester area, uh, which is located to the west of 270 and usually to the west of I-41, is this is a very attractive area because it's centrally located within St. Louis County. However, it's also very difficult to get around because you are near Manchester Road. And this is a very large street that a lot of people are driving by every single day. And it makes commute awful <laughs> if you have to go to work every day. However, if you're working from home, this is a fantastic option because you're close to a lot of things within St. Louis. There's a lot of shops and eateries on Manchester and everything that you would be wanting. And you get a really good bang for your buck within your home because the average home price was only three. 60 last year but that does come with a trade-off of not so fun traffic 
which if you're working from home, shouldn't be that big of a concern for you. When looking at the different homes in this area, typically they are from the 60s through the 80s of about 45 years age is the average home sold last year. Uh, so be considering that as well. You'll get a lot of split levels, you'll get some ranches, and you'll get some uh, two-story, three-story homes as well. Uh, but there's a large variety within there. This is a master plan kind of area where you're gonna be winding in and out of subdivisions and taking a, a few back roads that are a slightly windy to be getting to the major roads like Manchester 141 and eventually to 270. Coming in at number nine is Kirkwood, which is dab smack in the middle of St. Louis. Um, and it's very close to 270 and 44 and starting to get a little closer to I-64 as well. So you have very good maneuverability within St. Louis as a whole. Uh, the average square foot within Kirkwood is 1900. So you do get a lot of bang for your buck as well, but a little bit higher price point of 390. Now the thing that sets Kirkwood apart from other neighborhoods is that this is a very mature neighborhood neighborhood. The average home age is 60 years old. You'll find a lot of really old homes that are around 80 to 100 years old and there are mixes of new homes and new developments as well that can range from 500 all the way to a million dollars that really would uh, make Chip and Joanna Gaines proud with their farmhouse feel. The reason that a lot of people like Kirkwood is there is that downtown Kirkwood strip that has a lot of uh, shops and restaurants and just a cool vibe within there and there are a lot of mature trees as well and good lot size and walkability as you're going to be moving around the Kirkwood area. Coming in at number eight is Fenton, Missouri which is to the west of 270 and typically you'll be taking either 44 or 30 to get out into the Fenton area. Uh, the average home price in Fenton for 2021 was $321,000. You get a lot of land in this area, average of over a third of an acre, and the average home size is over 1,700 square feet as well. Within Fenton, this is starting to get a little bit more country depending on the area that you are in. There are two typical style homes. There is the subdivision, with newer built homes and there are also more rural areas with uh, already older homes, a lot of ranches, a lot of flats, a good amount of split levels as well. So you can be finding a lot of different home styles within Fenton and you are starting to get a little bit more into the country. Part of it is still considered uh, St. Louis County and part of Fenton is considered Jefferson County. One thing to make sure of when looking at homes in Fenton is that you are not in a flood zone area. Fenton is very close to the Merrimack River, which frequently floods. So just make sure that the homes that you're looking at are not in the flood zone. My in-laws actually live in Fenton and they absolutely love it because they're just five minutes from Gravoy Bluffs, which has a lot, a lot, a lot of shops and restaurants and definitely that uh, suburban kind of Feel, and it is also only about 20 minutes away from anything within St. Louis. If you're moving to St. Louis and planning on working from home, one area you gotta check out, number seven, is The Grove. Now this is made up of a few different neighborhoods where it's the Southeast Forest Park, The Gate, and Tiffany's. Uh, the reason that it's all lumped together is The Grove is a district where there's a lot of local bars and restaurants and really fun for people to be hanging out, especially people from SLU University, which is located just a few miles to the north. Within The Grove, the average home price is three. 328. You get a lot size of a tenth of an acre, which is smaller, but you are in the city and close to a lot of really fun restaurants and bars. And the average home age is 75 years old. So you're going to be having a lot older home than some of these other places that we mentioned. However, the home sizes are very large at 1900 square feet, which is amazing while living in the city. 
This is a fun area to be in where you're having a little more walkability than some of the other areas that we have mentioned and will be mentioning in the future. Uh, so if you want more of walkability, a little bit more nightlife and having a, a fun time after work hours and not needing to drive five to 10 to 15 minutes to get anywhere, the Grove is a fantastic place to check out. The sixth neighborhood that you gotta check out moving to St. Louis and working from home is Eureka. Now this is even farther to the west than Fenton and you're definitely getting more into the country, but there has been a lot of development over here in the past 30, 40 years. So this is off of 44 and so you can be taking 44 to get into St. Louis and typically this is about a 30 to 40 minute drive uh, to get places within St. Louis. If you're getting to 270, that is definitely about a 15 minute drive. So you're having a farther commute but there are a lot of benefits as well. So the average home age within Eureka sold last year was only 27 years old. So you're getting a lot newer home and about a third of an acre. The big kicker here is that you get a lot of square footage as well of about 2000 square feet for that average home. But the home price is only 344. So you're getting a lot of bang for your buck in that regards. So this is a fantastic uh, option for those who are wanting to have a little bit more of a country feel while you are still technically in a subdivision because a lot of the homes are newly built subdivision homes, but you can find some homes with more privacy as well that are more secluded in the country within Eureka. My mom actually worked as a teacher for about 20 years in Eureka. And so I know this area extremely well and it is definitely a sleeper on this list and a lot of people miss out on it because they think that it's super far away from St. Louis in general, but it's only about a 15 minute drive. My mom was taking that drive every single day and it's only about 15 minutes to get from actual Eureka all the way to that 270 belt loop within St. Louis. Coming in at number five is St. Peter's. Now this one is way up north within St. Charles County. It's the farthest north that we have on this list so far, but there's a lot of great things going for St. Peter's. The average home price for a home in St. Peter's last year was 293 with a 1700 square foot home. You get little under uh, a third of an acre lot and the average home age was a little over 30 years old. So within St. Peter's and St. Charles County in general, there's been a lot of development over the past 10 to 20 years. And a lot of people are deciding to move out that way. And before it was considered more out there and a longer drive, but a lot of businesses have been moving out that way. And so you don't have to drive nearly as far to get everything that you want. Within St. Peter's, it's very similar to Baldwin or Manchester, where you're gonna have a lot of subdivisions. You don't have very many major roads that run through St. Peter's, uh, so they do get a little congested, and uh, you'll be taking essentially Highway 70 to the north or 364 to the south uh, as your major ways to be commuting around the county area. You're about 40 minutes from um, the mid county like downtown Clayton or also the city but if you're working from home you don't have to care about that commute and everything else that you would be wanting is there as is the case with the majority of st. Louis st. Peter's has fantastic schools that are rated higher than the US average now I want to take a second and pause on this list and just remind you that if you haven't done so already please be hitting that subscribe button and clicking that notification bell because every single week I'm sending you a video just like this that explains what it's really like to be living here in St. Louis, explaining the neighborhoods to you so you have a better idea of what type of home you want and the location that you want it in because every single neighborhood is completely different. But let's get back to the list and we're off at number four, which is in Arnold, St. Louis. So Arnold is in Jefferson County and this is off of 55 for the most part. What Arnold really has going for it is that the average home price is 240 last year, which is $15,000 under the St. Louis average. And of the, the homes that sold last year, the average square footage was about 1,500 square feet. So you're getting a lot of 
room to work around and move around with a really good price point as well. The average home age within Arnold is 38 years old and you're getting about a fourth of an acre as well on these homes. The things that you need to know about Arnold is that this is in Jefferson County, which is a little bit more of a country feel, country vibes. Uh, and within Arnold, you do have a lot of the suburban restaurants, a lot of chain restaurants. You'll have everything that you need within Arnold, but it's also a lot of the uh, big, you know, chain restaurants as well. Within Arnold, a little bit within Fenton and Eureka, this would be considered a lot more of country feel, a lot more people identify as people living in the country within this area. Not necessarily that they're, you know, hillbillies or anything like that, just that you'll find more people that like uh, riding horses, going dirt biking and all of that fun stuff, hunting. So you might be able to identify with those people better and get to know your neighbors easier. But within Arnold, there's a lot of subdivisions as well and why that these home prices are so low because there's a lot of subdivisions that you'll most likely be finding your home in. Within Arnold, especially for the older homes, you're gonna be finding a lot of split levels and some ranches. As we head into our top three, make sure to leave a comment down below of what neighborhoods you think are the best ones for working from home and that you wanna hear more about. For our top three neighborhoods that you should be looking into if working from home in St. Louis, Coming in at number three is O'Fallon, which the average home price last year was only $339. Now this is located a little farther west than St. Peter's, and you do have a larger home price compared to St. Peter's, and you'd be like, well, Nathan, why, why is it costing more? You're getting farther away from St. Louis and the county, so how is it costing more? Well, within O'Fallon, you're finding a lot more subdivisions that have a lot of fun things to be doing within them with community pools, you get some with lakes, and you're getting a lot of bang for your buck, and you might have larger HOAs, but there's a lot of fun things to be doing specifically within your neighborhood or the surrounding areas. Within O'Fallon, you also typically find a newer home because the average home age was only 22 years old and just a shy under 2,000 square feet for the average. And the average lot size within O'Fallon is just under a fourth of an acre. So there's a lot of things going for O'Fallon that might be the right neighborhood for you. Coming in at number two is Shaw neighborhood. Now this one is also in the city. We mentioned the Grove earlier and this is just a little bit south from that on the other side of 44. Shaw neighborhood has an average home price in 2021 of $382,000, which is pretty pricey, but you are also getting a very high square footage as well because the average home was 2,300 square feet, which is extremely large, but you also don't get that much of a backyard because it, the average home only has a acreage of about a 10th of an acre. So smaller backyard, but you get a larger home and you are very close to Tower Grove Park, which is an amazing park that a lot of people decide to be going on bike rides, holding picnics, uh, walking their dog. And there's also food truck Fridays and a lot of uh, other festivals that like to go on within that park. You're also extremely close to the Botanical Gardens, uh, which is a fantastic garden, top five within the United States that has a lot of beautiful trees and bushes and flowers flowers uh, that are honestly just breathtaking. Shaw is a fantastic place to be working from home because it is very secluded within the city. A lot of the streets are blocked off from the major roads, specifically Grand, and so you don't get a lot of through traffic. It is very quiet as long as you're a little farther south from I-44, and you get a really large home for living in the city. One thing to note, and this is typical within the city, is that the average home age in Shaw is 114 years old. Now that shouldn't scare you off. I mean, I've bought three homes and all of them have been over 100 years old and you get a lot of charm and character within these homes. There are some things that you gotta deal with like floor layouts and things like that. Usually a little bit smaller living spaces, but you can't just automatically get that character in some of these new built homes. Well, here it is, the number one neighborhood that you gotta be checking out and thinking about if you're gonna be working from home here in St. Louis. Chesterfield, which is to the west of St. 
Louis County. It's still within St. Louis County, but towards the west side of it. Uh, you can get easy access towards the 270 belt loop through 64. And the thing that really sets Chesterfield apart from all of these different neighborhoods, the average square footage was 2,600 square feet. And the average home age was 38 years old. But within St. Charles, you usually have two different types of homes. You'll have these newly built homes that are very large, very extravagant, a uh, little bit more of the master plan feel, or there are also homes that were built in the 60s or 80s, uh, a lot of split levels or a lot of homes that are the two stories that you still get a lot of square footage. So within Chesterfield, you also get over a third of an acre. So if you're wanting the kids to be running around outside, there's plenty of room for them to do that. There's plenty of room for you to be in your office and away from the kids that are gonna be in another room playing. There's plenty of room within Chesterfield. And and not to mention that there's a lot to do outside of your home as well within Chesterfield. So there is the Chesterfield Mall. There's also a lot of strip malls within Chesterfield and it literally has everything that you would be asking for. And there's a lot of development going on within Chesterfield as well. Within St. Louis, there are two major hubs for business. There's Clayton downtown and there's also downtown St. Louis where there's a lot more high rises, a lot more of walkability and uh, people tend to gravitate towards those areas. There's a lot of development happening within Chesterfield where they're wanting to have a lot more walkability in the Chesterfield area, bringing people towards Chesterfield. And there's just been significant development over the past few years within Chesterfield. Well, there you have it. Those are the top 10 neighborhoods that you should be checking out if you're planning on living in St. Louis and working remotely. But there are a lot of other things that you need to know about living in St. Louis. So if you haven't done so already, make sure to hit that notification and subscribe and check out these other videos. You can get anywhere within the... Blech. No. Penelope. Shh, 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 shh. No. My dog is really on one. Every single time I try to record videos...